I really have welcomed you on this first Sunday in the new year. I'm Dominique, 2022. Much excitement if you're watching TV. I always watch the one on, on Times Square. We are home in time to, to do that. Uh, let me share with you my experience of January 1st when I was around a teenager. Most of my day on January 1st was watching football. Occasionally I would watch the Lowe's Bowl parade, but that interfered with two football games that were on. One was the Cotton Bowl, and one was the Sugar Bowl. Then at 4 o'clock I would turn in to the Lowe's Bowl in Pasadena, California. And then in the evening there was a big uh, celebration called the Orange Bowl that I would watch. And that was it. Four bowl games. This year, beginning with December 17th, and going on through January 10th, which will be the college uh, championship series game, there will be 39 bowl games. To me, that's kind of an overdue. And according to one of the nighttime hosts, one of them was named the Jimmy Kimmel Bowl. So I don't know if you watched that or not. Uh, it was a good game anyway. I see people watching it out there. So that's good. Uh, very good. The other thing I did on New Year's Day was to make resolutions. I can't ask for a show of hands, except for the few people that are here, but how many of you still make resolutions on New Year's Day? A resolution is kind of a covenant with yourself. I know covenants are supposed to be between people or between people and God in the ecclesiastical sense. But I made a covenant with my present self to be my best self later on. And sometimes I would write these uh, resolutions and put them in a sealed envelope to be opened up the following year, which conveniently I managed to lose most of the time and couldn't find. If you were really brave, you would share your, your resolutions with someone else. Yeah. Now this being January 2nd, I know that some of those resolutions were already broken by me and probably by you out there as well. But today, today I want to focus on covenants, mostly made between all of us and God. First there was the Mosaic Covenant, which is written upon two tablets of stone, so the Bible tells us. The equipment had to make a copy, because when he went down off the mountain, he found that people were worshiping idols. He got so angry, he threw the two uh, pieces of uh, cement, whatever they were, on the ground, yelled and screamed at them, and then went back up on the mountain to get another new set, which fortunately God provided uh, for him. These uh, stone cap covenants, or commandments, were placed into a Ark of the Covenant, which after the temple was destroyed, they could never find that Ark of the Covenant once again. That's the problem with having things outside of you that you have to then later on try to find or hold on to. In the prophet's reading today from Jeremiah, he was a young man, probably even a teenager. And so when God first called him, he said, no thank you, I am way too young to be your spokesperson. And as you know, if you're given any excuses when God calls you, that does not work. But he became a prophet, also known as the weeping prophet. He would cry for the people because he had some very difficult messages to bring to them. Messages that they would have been unfaithful to God. And because of that, because of their unfaithfulness, there were going to be wars and unhappiness among the people. And eventually deportation out of the land that God had promised to them. All of this caused by their unfaithfulness. You can see why that would be a difficult message for anyone, especially you to deliver the people. But today, the passage that Ann read in the 31st chapter of Jeremiah, there is at least some good news he had to share, because God was going to restore them. It's a restoration message. That God would once again bring the people back from all corners of the world, and there would be all kinds of celebration, kind of similar to what happened, I think, on New Year's Eve at Times Square and other places around the country and around the world. I don't believe there were any fireworks, but he was on to say there was singing and there was dancing of ladies in the street in celebration of that covenant. 
This was a covenant, Jeremiah said, not external to us, but God's law now written upon the heart were certainly made it easier for us to hold on to and carry with us, and harder for us uh, to lose. And in writing of St. Paul to the church in, 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 in Ephesus, he brings us a step further in the idea of covenant with God. Because now with the gift of Jesus, whose birthday we have just celebrated, we have yet a covenant. This covenant gives us adoption as God's children, redemption for at a price. The Messiah born in the house of bread, who would soon be a metaphor for the bread of, the bread of the world, bread of life, would also be sacrificed, shedding his blood for our salvation. And we are still in the midst of Christmas celebration. I know that a lot of the world doesn't agree with that. Um, I always hate to see on December 26th Christmas trees out on the curb. I know they're up there because they're probably in the house for over a month already since Thanksgiving. Some lights that have been in houses are now turned off. You can go to the store and find all the Christmas decorations on sale for a half price. All these things are now happening. Uh, Christmas cards for half price. It's all over. Basically, Christmas is seen as one day. But it's not one day. When you listen to the radios a month or so before we had Christmas Day, there was all kinds of Christmas songs. Some of them were spiritual, some of them were not so spiritual. But the theme was Christmas, which is really Christ Mass. That's a combination of that word, Christ Mass, which would be similar to our communion today. Uh, but that's what they would do. And at now, you don't hear a word about any of that music. It's all back to what was usually the top 40 on so many, many of, of our stations. Because Christmas is over. But this is the ninth day of Christmas. The ninth day of Christmas. There are 12 days of Christmas. Now, I, I don't mean just a song, by the way. We all know that song in the first day of Christmas. My true love gave to me a partridge in a pear tree. And over the years, people have added up how much that price would be for all those gifts that were given on those 12 days of Christmas. Because of the high inflation right now, uh, that price of all those things, including today, which by the way would be nine dancing ladies, which reminds me of the Jeremiah passage. Nine dancing ladies. All that would come to a nice round figure of $41,000, or about the price of a Model 3 Tesla. That's what you could have today for that $41,000. But Christmas is far more than that. And next week, we'll still be in the season of Christmas. The 12 days of Christmas ends with the Epiphany on January 6th. And Rob Schwartz, our member in, 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 concern, in, in, in the sermon for our church, will be preaching next Sunday about an Epiphany theme. And I hope that we'll be up and running better by that time and you'll be able to enjoy that. In some ways, the message we have today is very similar to what Jeremiah had to face. There was deportation, there was warfare, there was anger among the people, there was discord. They couldn't agree on anything. That kind of sets our society today. We have hatred, we have misunderstanding, we have great divisions in this great country of ours. And on top of all that, we're fearful for the earth and these storms that now come seem to be weekly, horrendous storms. The fire in the west, flooding, and other wind storms in the south, and even up here in the east. We, so far, we've been pretty lucky here in Connecticut. All these things are happening to us. And on top of all that, oh yes, there's COVID-19, with the newest variant, which kind of shut down churches again. They were out there trying to do their best to, to be open. Third time around, we've had to deal with variants of this COVID-19. And uh, we're tired of seeing just the eyes of people. We don't see an opportunity to see their faces, uh, the smiles or their noses at all times. Uh, there was a sense of humor about all this. I remember seeing a cartoon recently. Birds were talking. And they said, you don't have to build nests anymore because there are many of these things lying around. They were pointing to face masks. <laughs> which they were using in the trees as hammocks. I thought that was pretty funny uh, to have a good sense of humor about this time. Now we do know 
that uh, we have various uh, words about whether we have COVID-19 or the flu or cold or allergies. And so I went online, and you can all do this, of course. You can see a beautiful little colorful demonstration. What are allergies? What's the flu? What could be a cold? What could be COVID-19? All of that you can see uh, online. So we are very much aware of all the possible symptoms of what it is to be sick at COVID. However, I want to share with you today a different kind of virus that I want you to spread. I want to spread this virus. And I call it the covenant <laughs> virus. Remembering that we have a covenant with God and God with us. We can see a breakout of these of this covenant virus. If you look around and look at people and look at what's really happening in the world, give me, let me give you some of the symptoms of the covenant virus. A tendency to think and act spontaneously rather than on fear based on past experience. An unmistakable ability to enjoy each moment that God gives us the gift of life. A loss of interest in judging others. A loss of interest in conflict. A loss of the ability to, to worry. That's a major symptom. Frequent overwhelming episodes of appreciation and gratitude. Frequent attacks of smiling. Believe it or not. An increased susceptibility to the love extended by others, as well as an uncontrollable urge to extend it to ourselves and others. This covenant that God has made has been around thousands of years. And while we have a direct line to catching it through Jesus, others have also been infected with this covenant virus. They like menorahs, or they like canards, or they decorate Christmas trees. Let me share with you a couple of people that me have shared this covenant virus with me in my life. First there was the Reverend Anthony Thompson. Who was he, you might ask? His wife, Myra, was one of nine individuals who were shot to death during the prayer meeting at the Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church by Dylan Roos, who hoped that his act of violence in a, in a, in a peaceful setting would start a race war. Now here's where the covenant virus broke out. Reverend Thompson said, I would like him to know that I forgive you and my family forgives you. A giant of a man who only stood five foot four was Archbishop Desmond Tutu, whose death we had to celebrate this week. He was a man that truly held on to the principles also shared by Martin Luther King Jr. He believed in the politics of forgiveness and reconciliation. Yes, there should be punishment for the crimes, but none of us, none of us stand uh, without sin and brokenness in our lives. He would be on a commission that would study the horrors of apartheid in South Africa. But he also called to question those in the ANC, which was the African National Committee Conference, who also had acts of violence and, and horror. And he called them out as well. Over my shoulder this year began with the, the uh, inauguration of President uh, Biden. And I love the quote that you will see uh, on that bulletin board in back of me. I think I have a copy of it here in front of me too as well, but I can't find it. But oh, here it is. Breakout of covenant of the virus of love and peace. For there is always light if you only are brave enough to see it. If only we are brave enough to be it. And then in a recent article in the New York, in the uh, Delhi News, or I think it was actually in the um, USA Today, we know that our health workers have been example, examples of covenant virus. They have made a covenant, if not with God, to be professional in the way they care for people who are sick. And they've done a masterful job. They really have just a wonderful job. This is a quote from a woman who had been a nurse for 32 years, 
Uh, and in the last few years, she has had anxiety attacks, uh, afraid to go to a car wash because of the kind of claustrophobic kind of thing. Took time off from work, but she's going back to work, and she's going to be back in the same COVID ward that she escaped from. Someone had asked her, why do you do this? Why do you care? Why do you cry for dying patients? Why are you putting your own life at risk? And here's what she said. Maybe I can explain it to you this way. Help you understand why I find all this significant. You know, by the grace of God, you come into this world. Most of all, most of us do, with a mother who grabs you and holds you, or somebody else who wants to hold you right away. But for death, especially in a hospital, by the grace of God, you have a good nurse, or somebody who sits with you and is holding your hand, or cares about you. But that's a crapshoot. So I'm going to be that person for as long as I can. A breakout of the covenant virus. So as we all know the symptoms of the flu and the cold and allergies and COVID-19 in its various forms, I ask you to think about this as a way to be in 2022. Seek out all of the examples of a covenant virus. And rather than try to shield yourself from it, expose yourself to that. Be that covenant virus. I think we may be able to make some drastic changes, hopefully, in this world of 2022. Amen. Amen. Amen.